Before we begin, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Amazon Music for partnering with me on this episode of Chasing Creativity, but more on this later. Let's get right into today's episode. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Chasing Creativity. I'm Kiran Manral, your host, and today my guest is illustrator, animator, award-winning indie comics creator, and the creator of something we love, Angry Mousy. Welcome to Chasing Creativity, Abhijit. Thanks, Kiran. Thanks for having me. I think uh, it's lovely being here. After listening to all the lovely podcasts you've churned out, I think it's a <laughs> it's a pleasure and an honor being here. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. I'm glad you could make it and I've really been wanting to have you on the show for a while. You know that we've been through all sorts of yes. wrong emails and wrong messages, <laughs> but you're here finally yes. and let me make the best of it. Looking forward. Tell me to start straight off the bat. How did comics interest you? We all, you know, read comics as kids and we all loved. I mean, I grew up in the age of Phantom and Mandrake right. and Tinkle and right. all that, but we never ever got down to creating them. What made you decide to take it up as a career? I think my interest in comics also began when I was, I mean, probably four maybe. Mm. Uh, I remember my parents exposing me to this medium very young and uh, I loved the visuals. The fact that a story can be told through pictures, uh, colorful images and dialogue bubbles. I think that fascinated me a lot. And uh, something in me, I, I just wanted to draw these. Uh, and I think I have my early scribbles from back then where I've actually drawn small comics and uh, told jokes, you know, in that style. So I think uh, from a very young age, that medium has interested me. Uh, I have fallen in love with the, the whole visual aspect of it, I think, and the characters that we grew up with, the names you took. I think even I have read, I think Mandrake was one of my favorites, uh, but then along came Tinkle, Shikari Shambhu, Supandi, uh, Asterix, Tintin, yes. and then eventually Mad. Mm. I was exposed to Mad at a very young age. So I I took it all in, you know, and I, I enjoyed reading those more than, I must say, even children's books. Okay. <laughs> so when I say if I have a favorite children's book, I probably have not many, but if I can name the comics that I grew up with much more easier. And I still have them collected, by the way. Oh, that's uh, I wonderful. I have most of them in mint condition. And I think that's my love for comics, which started at a very, very young age. And I must thank my mom, my mom and dad, my mom, especially because after exams, the results came back and she used to say, Chalo, we'll pick you, uh, we'll get you some comics today. And I used to say, okay, today I want five. If I've come first, I want six comics. <laughs> 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 but I think that was my uh, reward. Lovely. I loved uh, picking up comics and I loved right, uh, you know, at, at all these second hand book st uh, stalls or even bookshops that we knew, I always had my eyes peeled for comics. Lovely. I remember I used to love these Amar Chitra Kathas yes. also and Tinkle, Mad. I didn't have Mad, but all Phantom Mandrake. And right. I had a pile of comics, two piles, which were taller than me. Okay. Uh, and I had a lending library at home. Oh, wow. Yeah. And very proper with a book of ledger and, you know, 50 paisa, nice. whatever, 20, not 50, it couldn't be 50 paisa in those days, <laughs> it would be 5 paisa or 10 paisa, I wow. think. So, comics, love was there. I think we grew up with comics and I really feel bad for this generation of kids who have gone on straight to very adult type of yeah. comics. The screens yeah. and uh, web comics have, I think, uh, changed it all changed it somewhere. All. But uh, all the parents are like, you know, you have to be a doctor, you have to be an engineer. You have to be a management person. How did you become a comics person? <laughs> That's also something that I, I I must say I never had that pressure at home. Okay. Uh, I always was told to follow what I love doing. And they saw that spark in me that I can draw. You know, I used to love cartooning. I used to love uh, drawing comics, of course. And I think they realized that iska yehi hai. <laughs> he'll enjoy. I mean, I was a good student, but I was never really interested mm. in the mainstream math, science, whatever. Eventually, I used to enjoy my drawing classes in school. Mm. I think, uh, bolte hai na, like you know, you know the the signs were very clear. And I'm glad that they didn't kill it. Mm -hmm. They encouraged it. And uh, so 
I I say my great grandfather was a director of education in Mysore state. My grandfather was uh, an eng- engineer. He was with Premier Automobiles as a VP. My father's a lawyer and then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you changed the trend completely. Uh, yeah, I mean I completely went off and in fact my grandfather was a little worried saying, you know, art is that something you really want to do because I see it as a hobby. And I used to be like no, I want to give this a shot. and of course i mean i found myself answerable more to my parents mm-hmm. uh, than anyone else so i think they wanted me to do this whatever i loved in fact my mom took me to meet uh, anant pai oh wonderful when i was in class 9 or 10 that's so wonderful just to show you know my in fact that was my fanboy moment as well uh, growing up reading the comics and meeting those people uh, you know uncle pai was nice enough to give me a script just to try I drew that story. I sent it. He sent it back to me, saying, "Okay, you're too young. Just uh, get done with your education, training, whatever. Come back later." I still have that letter, and uh, so that's the encouragement I had. So I am very happy that my dreams are not killed for mainstream. So how did you train in it? You studied art, and you uh, or you studied the mainstream, and then got into art. So I am a self-taught illustrator. Okay. Uh, I didn't do any formal art training, uh, but I did do my bachelor in mass media. Okay. Uh, from National College, uh, we were the first batch. Uh, the course was just introduced, and uh, I was very happy that the course came when I was just going to join degree college. Uh, so I I majored in advertising, and after that. I did a year of uh, 2D animation diploma. Mm-hmm. So two loves, two uh, you know, great interests I had was uh, media and animation. I wanted to do both, and I got a chance to do both. So 2D animation. So I am a trained animator, okay. and uh, that's where I picked up some more nuances of illustration and all. But largely, my portfolio was already made when I was in college. Mm-hmm. I was already freelancing while I was in college. So my first big break was midday. Okay. I was freelancing. I was interning with them, midday multimedia, the website, the newspaper. There was a magazine called Jam. Yes. Uh, Rashmi Bansal's. Just uh, about. So, as all most of the teenagers who could write and draw that time, even I had my first uh, illustration published there, and I'd also freelance for a bank manager who wanted to come up with a book. Oh, and so I had some portfolio. Already. You were very enterprising as a teenager, I must say. Again, uh, right place, right time. and encouragement i would always say from home that's the main thing so that way i think uh, by the time i was done with my animation my degree everything i was uh, ready to go back to tinkle and pitch my work and that's 2004 that's from when i started drawing for them lovely <laughs> 2004 to now has been a long journey long journey and uh, you know when you see a comic book as a uh, i'm a storyteller of words yes. but uh, and my job is to describe the scene visually when you see it visually and then fit in the words so it's a reverse process so to speak yes what uh, are the challenges of uh, doing this that you know a lay person would not understand so i think the main thing is the story comes first always uh, there's always a script that has to be in place and our work there is to convert those into visuals so that's the most challenging part getting the the setting right uh, what the art, the writer wants you to uh, show what the writer wants you to uh, depict then it's your your call like you know if you want to show a person in a particular manner uh, add some easter eggs to the scene then you start imagining it so if you are working on a very intense character chances are you will start you know kind of i won't say thinking like the character but yes there's a little bit of your own emotion mm-hmm. that also comes mm-hmm. into it um the characters you draw most of them must be based on someone or the other you met mm-hmm. uh, there's always an influence visually yeah, we are cannibals we all <laughs> <laughs> i i always give this example uh, i had a teacher in school uh, she was a complete terror okay and Even now, when I work on school stories, there's always one teacher who ends up looking like her. <laughs> For some reason, my classmates, my my friends from school now, who I'm touch with, they'll call me and say, "Is that is that who we think it is?" Yes. Turns out she always appears in something or the other. Maybe someone, some relative of mine, has a very peculiar expression or a behavioral pattern. I would draw those things. So if I read a person's script, and I understand that this character is supposed to react this way, I'll probably base it on someone I know. consciously or uh, unconsciously it just happens 
and then you kind of have to make space for the dialogue bubbles hmm. so when you draw a scene you have to make sure that there are three dialogues in this panel okay. so there has to be enough space there to uh draw those bubbles so that the art doesn't get covered sometimes the words are too much there's not much space for art mm mm-hmm. then i call the writer and say thoda you know if you can just edit out that bubble let me show a little more of the expression there so a little bit of to and fro happens okay uh, and if you know the script writer very well it's always a nice uh, synergy and when it comes to my own comics which i draw and write it's a much more faster process and i do skip a couple of stages there myself mm-hmm. i just directly <laughs> draw and write as it comes okay so there are two very specific ways i can say that i work on script to art who would you say are your inspirations we know phantom mandrick huh. mad etc but among the illustrators or the comic writers growing up uh, mario miranda okay mario miranda was a big big influence at least for the expressions and uh, you know places even he had two very specific styles himself like you know a very funny one exaggerated and a very very serious one which is almost like uh classical art you know he would draw these monuments so beautifully uh people used to look very realistic but if you flip the page you have a very comical version of the same place or people his goa books are hilarious so are his uh, uh you bombay. know foreign uh, the the travels uh-huh. ha his bombay collection to is a uh, different level only so and growing up for me uh we had bal bharati textbooks yes so he had illustrations in those really i didn't know that okay and by the time i realized it's mario we had already had those books out means i think by fourth our syllabus changed or something so for a good 3 years i used to look at the illustrations and remember the chapters better our english uh, stories and i still remember some characters uh shirin and jal were two characters in bal bharati books who were always like these two kids taking you through adventures or something like Are we the same vintage? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because bal bharati didn't change for a long time so I think I think yeah. We had the same bal bharati 70s 80s? I grew up in the 80s. 80s. Yes. Ah. We so might have had the same, same uh, Bombila yeah. the Miser. Yes. I love that name. <laughs> Yes, I remember this. So it's, I probably started it, and you came at the fag end yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, we are on the same uh, bal bharati uh, edition. From the time of Amar Chitrakatha and Tinkal to current day comics in India and consumption of comics, what has been the trajectory you've seen? Growing up uh, in the eighties and all, of course, comics were huge. But two thousands, I think there was a little bit of a dip. Okay. By the time the internet came in, people started. uh using broadband internet uh games gaming was big in the early 2000s still is i think thanks to harry potter and all these books i think the reading again picked up a little later and by reading i mean books comics has always been a little up and down but right now is a great time to be a comic creator comic reader mm-hmm. because there are so many events that happen mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, around the concept of comics so people who are curious can come and see what's up creators can put their work out there for display and sale uh fans can reach out better now so i think readership is very much there mm-hmm. and i think all the comics especially ck tinkle they as relevant today as uh, what it was uh, back then for us in fact they have even amped it up the whole quality the look and feel of it the stories i work on also so fun so yeah i think right now is a great time obviously all media goes through its up, ups and downs and i think reading did take a hit maybe in the late 90s early 2000s but i think right now some i read somewhere it's, this probably is the new golden age of comics in india i don't know how wonderful i don't know if it is true then i'll be happy <laughs> please send some of that golden age trickling down to novels and books <laughs> yes we yes. need more readers we have people who say they only read non fiction so i'm most disheartened oh yeah that that that's, category that's, yeah. that's another debate uh, for another time <laughs> <laughs> you know there's this perception about comics being only for children hmm. and i think that that's i personally feel that's, that's very false. wrong yeah. yeah what is your take on it no um i still get asked this uh aap to bachon ke liye karte ho this is kiddy stuff uh who takes it seriously i get asked this on the face and i'm like wow a you all don't know the process of making a comic and b there's a comic for every age group uh be it the western comics be it manga hmm. you know the japanese have figured it out long time ago <laughs> every age group every demographic has a comic hmm. uh, has has a you know uh, content written for them 
it's only here that we still are stuck there ki uh, you know at comic cons what happens is people come up to my stall and say oh yeah uh, you know i used to read uh, comics but that was way back in school mm-hmm. it's like life happened oh i grew up I'm like why who stops you you can always pick it up again there's nothing stopping you from reading a comic no i mean it just looks silly imagine these things are still around so the look silly is more important than the joy you derive from exactly, reading exactly, the comic exactly 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 okay i think that mindset is thankfully changing now again like i said the exposure is a little higher uh thanks to instagram and all these other platforms we use people are now at least aware ki hey there's stuff for everyone uh you can come talk to us you can come see our work you can come um, interact with everyone around now is changing uh, and now they know that there's adult comics as well uh half the dc marvel stuff we see the comics are very very violent and you can't just say it's for kids no, no, no. <laughs> i mean even your archie is now is so grown up archie is grown up archie died they killed archie uh there's a zombie archie series for those of uh, for the readers for the for the listeners who are aware of this i'm sure you all know exactly what i'm talking about jughead's uh, hot dog like the dog dies and he gets the dog resurrected through sabrina the witch with some voodoo and black magic but turns out to be a zombie dog and kills everyone and they become zombies my god that's really dumb <laughs> <laughs> so and it's absolute gore it's not even funny horror so there's that too right so comics are there for everyone and i think people should stop thinking it's a children's medium altogether absolutely wise words abhijit when you are creating you already spoke about that nasty teacher who pops up in your comics <laughs> but uh, you know angry marshy was on issues how do you decide that you're going to do something on this particular issue and then how do you build the script the, i mean just a rough guide uh so angry mouse has been created i mean the stories have been written over once a year over 3 4 years okay uh so the current affairs from those times have been reflected more uh so i look at the current affairs i look at the political situation uh, i don't want to be politically very clear on it but i want to show what's happening and things that bother me about mumbai infrastructure whatever it might be i just put it uh, she is a reflection of people's thoughts uh, albeit a little too extreme mm-hmm. but she gets her job done <laughs> and there are characters with her who make her life easier we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with abhijit kini on chasing creativity don't go away so you know creating comics is an intense process what do you do when you feel stuck or when you feel like this isn't moving anymore you try to distract yourself from the job at hand as much as possible some may call it procrastination i call it research <laughs> 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 so i would spend as much time away i'll probably play my guitar i'll probably uh watch some stupid reels on instagram or whatever step out do anything else but that because i know at the back of my mind something is marinating hmm eventually when you come back to that job at hand maybe at night and night is the best because you know that's that's when i think the best ideas come at least for me that's when i think ah now i'm okay now i think the ideas may flow better because i wasted the entire day <laughs> <laughs> researching whatever i call it but i think everyone has to be able to do that i mean you don't have to feel very guilty of stepping away for some time it's absolutely fine you're not a machine uh and creativity is something i'm sure even you agree that uh when you create your content you when you write i'm sure even you have phases where you get stuck on things and it's completely okay everyone faces it uh i know some new artists young artists who just panic a lot and say oh man you know what i couldn't do anything today uh, and i have a deadline in 6 days that's okay if you are so driven i'm sure you'll pull it off even on the last minute but that doesn't mean you can sit stuck looking at the screen and just saying i can't do this mm-hmm. step away it's fine that w- that brings me to the next question i was going to ask what do you do when you have a deadline and a situation like this happens because <laughs> yeah yeah that is very scary yes yes it but sometimes is. i think the best work comes out of that does that happen with pressure, you pressure yes pressure is always something that works i think the more time you had have uh, on hand uh, chances are you try to postpone your best 
so you're right when a deadline is there i think your brain just goes into overdrive and say you know what forget everything else research can happen later <laughs> <laughs> uh no but there are times when you just can't crack it even then so what you do is work on multiple options and uh, just hope that they like one of them or probably take it from there but i think as you said deadlines pressure always brings the best out of any creative person i feel uh that's the case because you know there's a paycheck at the end of it <laughs> <laughs> and knowing the clients we deal with there's always a, uh, the paycheck at the end because no one really gives too much of 50% advance all the time and that's the sad part and that's a big tragedy yeah yeah it's a sad part because they they're like no you don't know we don't have budgets it's a very tricky thing you know being on your own and talking to uh, clients about comics art and deadlines and then talking money it's a very tricky situation because even they claim that humko we don't know the medium so well uh, we need to give this a shot and see so apart from your thinking pressure your mm-hmm. creative block or whatever there's also this block about your paisa aayega ya nahi aayega very so important whole, block yeah there's a whole <laughs> lot of things happening there and uske beech mein in the middle of all that you have to start thinking creatively and churn out something mm-hmm. so i think you manage because there's so much riding on this no ho hi jata hai ho hi jata hai that's interesting um i've always been wondering like it's such a niche hmm. space that you occupy and uh, how do you get people i mean to know about your books you go to comic con of yeah. course but how do you market your work how do you get readers to te- i mean test drive your books so sure. to speak i think a lot has to do with the the internet today that's okay. an option we didn't have uh, back in the 90s and even early 2000s social media was the very recent thing so we didn't have blogs we didn't have websites to display our work back then we actually had to carry our portfolios to various offices hmm. now it's so much better that you just run an instagram ad sponsored ad you know that there are going to be eyeballs okay. you know that it will attract so that that's where my wife comes in diksha is someone who handles our marketing and uh, merchandising and even the social media aspect so she makes sure that uh, the sponsored ads are run we talk about our comics at any event we do like i do a lot of workshops for schools mm mm-hmm. uh, i am also visiting faculty at a couple of colleges so i always try and talk about any new book i'm coming up with just as a as a b side like right? you know okay this is there and this is how it happened just to garner some amount of interest and see what people think of it but i think a large chunk of our audience does come from events word of mouth and instagram ads okay and that's what we are really really uh, pushing that's what we really look at uh, to get more people to try out this content and again like you said niche profession niche content as well because these are adult comics like angry mm. moshi is an adult socio political satire it's not for everyone it's not for everyone definitely uh, and my tinkle fans might come up to me and say hey you know what uh, we want to pick this up they might be kids and i'll be like no it's not for you this is probably for parents who have come along with you uh, so that's an even more niche audience mm. we have to look at something like bombay rhymes is a book on bombay uh, the characters that we have around us in the city that's a more universal thing so we target our ads accordingly age groups locations and that's how we try and get people to lovely check these books out tell me something about butterfingers your latest <laughs> venture butterfingers has been a character very close to my heart and i started drawing it uh, uh for tinkle uh, back in 2007 when the series started now i'm drawing it for penguin okay uh, and we recently had a new book called the world of butterfingers out uh, khairunisa is a brilliant writer and uh, she's more like family to us now because we've collaborated for all these years but her fingers is like something that is very very close to both of us she she writes the scripts i do the art again like i said you know school stories childhood stories uh gags friends teachers these are things that the series has and knowing my like the teacher i just spoke to you about <laughs> i have multiple teachers i can draw in <laughs> <laughs> multiple uncles and aunties that i can just have fun drawing reactions and there's always some amount of some disaster that he'll be uh creating and then saving the day it's fun you know it's a, it's like living a little part of your childhood again so i think i enjoy that it reminds me of a quote from someone i forget who never annoy a writer they'll kill you off in their book <laughs> so <laughs> i said never annoy an illustrator they'll also kill you off in their book we'll show you how they can be killed <laughs> off also yes gruesomely <laughs> 
So tell me something about your merchandise. Uh the merchandise is now about we started it in 2011 just to try it out at Comic Con. And me and my wife uh we had given it a thought and said, you know what, let's try this out. Few things that we could print and uh display and sell. But uh, we got a very good response and from then we thought we'll make this a brand. So now we work as Kini Studios. Kini okay. Studios dot com is uh, the website where you can check the shop section. Uh, most of it is all of it, in fact, is humor. But we also have things like the Mumbai figurines, the Bombay Rhymes figurines, the okay. Rhyme Fighters figurines, uh, which are based on the characters I've drawn in the comics, everyday Mumbaiers, but sculpted by an NGO that we work with closely with. Lovely. So it's a nice uh, way of kind of giving it back to society as well for us, and even they enjoy the kind of characters that they get to sculpt with us. So it's a nice uh, synergy that we have with them. Again, um, with Kini Studios dot com, we always aim at coming up with more and more quirky collectibles, quirky humor, something every something we would want to collect and keep at home. Those kind of jokes or those kind of characters that's on a mouse pad or a coaster or a mug or anything like that. So we've got a very good response over the years, and we plan to have more in our inventory very soon. Lovely, all the very best for Thank that. And a final question: If someone wants to get into comic book illustration creation, what would be your tips for that person? Um, I think the most important thing is building a strong portfolio. Um, you have to be sure of what your strong points are. For some, it might be writing a comic. They might not be an artist, mm -hmm. but even a writing. portfolio is very very important as much as a drawing portfolio uh because some of the best comic names that we have today are writers and not illustrators like alan moore is a writer who's come up with probably some of the best graphic novels ever so i think portfolio is important i think practice is very important and you need to be uh keeping up with the times technology like you have new softwares you have new apps probably which make your life a little simpler easier try it out you know you can't be stuck in one gear uh, mm -hmm. all the time um so i think these things practice and portfolio on top for sure okay and uh, i think the rest of it is all up to you how you market yourself how you sell uh, your name all that's important and also being in the right place at the right time absolutely always yeah. always wonderful conversation thank you so much for this abhijit thanks kiran <laughs> all the very best with butterfingers and all that you do thank you so much thank you so much and with that this is a wrap on this episode of chasing creativity we were talking with abhijit kinney and uh, do catch us on binchpot spotify apple podcasts wherever you get your audio content see you next week Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Chasing Creativity. I wanted to say thank you to Amazon Music once again for partnering with me on this episode of this podcast.